Shabbat Shalom. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. For today, there are some props that will serve you very well that I want to encourage you to have. Um, number one is a pillow. Two, um, a couple of blocks or thick hardcover books. And then three, if you can see behind me, um, a couple of towels or blankets that are of similar size. And I want to encourage you to fold them into quarters. This is what mine looks like when it's folded into um, quarters. So let me uh, make a few notes of introduction while you are getting out your props. Um, first and foremost, welcome. Welcome to the Open Temple Virtual Yoga Studio. My name is Zach Lasker. I'm um, both the executive director of Open Temple and also our resident yoga instructor. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here with you today. And um, over the course of the next several weeks, we are using our virtual yoga studio, studio to do a deep dive into the Jewish tradition of Musar. Simply stated, Musar is a path towards ethical behavior. And it's a quest to kind of answer the question, what does it take to be holy? Or as I like to say, what does it take to really let out our inner mensch? And there are several attributes, um, specifically the ones that I'm using um, are excavated by Alan Marinus, who is one of the current top scholars around Musar. Last week, we started our exploration with the attribute of humility. And this week, we're gonna be looking at the attribute of patience. One of the attributes that I think is most relevant to the state of the world right now. Um, and uh, to begin our practice today, I promised Susan, one of the people who's in our yoga studio again this week, that we would be starting with a restorative pose, which is so relevant and important for patients. And this is how you're going to set it up using your props. Fold your blankets into quarters the long way and stack them one on top of the other. This is what mine look like. So that's step one. Step two is to take your blocks or thick hardcover books and place them on top of your towels or blankets, spaced out a little bit and you want them on the lowest level. This is the low level, that's medium, that's high. Have them on the lowest level. We're kind of building ourselves a restorative tower. And then place your towel on top of your blocks or books. And guess what? If you don't have blankets, just put your um, blocks or books directly on the mat and the pillow on top of that. If you don't have the blocks or books, just have your towel and your pillow and so on and so forth. Use the props that you have. Once you have your tower set up, sit with your hips directly aligned with the bottom end of your tower. Extend your shins towards the front of the room so that there is an angle right here. And then take your hands, place them on both sides of your tower and rotate your chest so that it's directly over the tower. This is a twisting pose. And then start to walk your hands forward, lower your chest onto this tower, turn your head so that it's in the same direction as your knees and inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose, bringing life and energy and rejuvenation into your body. And 
and use the exhale as an opportunity to let go of all of the items that are waiting for you off the mat in this present moment. While this is a restorative pose, this could for some people in this yoga studio be what I refer to as a peak pose, the most challenging pose. Turning your mind inward. Growing present. We're going to be on the side for about another half minute. And as you grow still, start to make observations. Observe the fluctuations of your mind. Observe your breath. Make an observation around your heartbeat. Just self-assess. Let's take another few cycles of breath together. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And again, inhale through your nose. And an audible exhale out your mouth. And now come up onto your fingertips. Start to lift your chest up. Walk your hands back in towards your hips. Lift up through your torso. And then you're gonna swing your knees around to face in the other direction. So you wanna align your hips up with the bottom end of your tower. And again, frame the tower with the palms of your hands pressing into the ground. Position your shins so that they're at an angle perpendicular to your thighs. And then rotate your ribs and hips so that they're centered over your tower, over your towels, your blocks, your pillow. And then start to walk your hands forward towards the back of the mat. And again, lower your chest onto the pillow, lower your forearms onto the ground, and turn your head in the direction of your knees and completely lower down. And resume a slow and steady cycle of breath. And a nice frame of mind that I want to offer you for our practice today, in the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, adopt the pace of nature. Her secret is patience.
deep inhales through your nose to bring that oxygen in. The gift of the oxygen in your body is that it can relax your muscles and relax your cells, calm your mind. And the exhale is that exit vehicle to relieve your body of tension. One of the reasons why we're starting in this restorative pose and being so intentional around our breath is because one of the strategies for cultivating the attribute of patience starts when stakes are so low. So before we move into any postures that are on the more vigorous end of the spectrum, can we really release the tension, settle in, learn to be present and to cultivate the breath during a pose that is restorative. The more we give ourselves permission to take advantage of moments that are in the hemisphere of rest and digest, the more capacity we have to endure when we're called on in those moments of fight or flight. So fill your bank account now with that energy and breath. Let's take another couple of cycles of breath together. Inhale through your nose and exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose and an audible exhale out your mouth. Cup the palms of your hands, come up onto your fingertips. Straighten your arms as you lift your torso up. Walk your hands back in towards your hips. Lift up through your torso. And then we are going to, for now, remove the pillow, remove the books or blocks. You can put them towards the top of your mat if you'd like and fold up your towels and pillows, excuse me, towels or blankets, put them off to the side. And then come sit on your tush, extend your arms out towards the front of the room, slowly lower down onto your back. Draw your knees into your chest, interlace your fingers around your right knee and extend your left leg towards the front of the room, pushing out through your left foot onto the wall in front of you. Imagine that you could stamp it onto that wall and inhale, draw your right knee closer to your right armpit and exhale. And inhale through your nose. and exhale out your mouth. And one more inhale. And exhale. And now grab your right hand onto your right ankle. Start to lower your right knee down towards the ground. Use your right hand to press your right foot into your inner left thigh, and then release the ankle. 
let your right knee drop towards the ground. It might reach all the way to the ground, it might not. In my case, it doesn't. So don't feel awkward. And then inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, start to lower your arms down in back of you. Arms descend down towards the ground. Maybe they come all the way, maybe they come part way. The palms of your hands should face in towards each other. Inhale, grow longer through that left leg. Again, imagine you could stamp your left foot on the wall in front of you and exhale. Inhale, lengthen through your upper torso towards the back of the room and you'll find that that's what lifts your shoulders up and extends your arms longer and exhale. One more inhale. And as you exhale, arms come back up towards the ceiling. They come down alongside your torso. Bring your right knee back into your chest. Bring your left knee in to meet it, hands on top of your knees. And second side, interlace your fingers around your left knee as you extend your right leg forward, lower down onto your right heel. This time, stamp your right foot on the wall in front of you as you simultaneously draw your left knee towards your left armpit. Couple cycles of breath like this. Inhale, growing longer through your right leg, using the exhale as an opportunity to draw your left knee closer to your left armpit. One more inhale. And exhale. And take your left hand onto your left ankle. Attach your left foot to your inner right thigh and lower your left knee towards the ground. And be careful here not to have your foot pressed up against your knee. So you really want to be intentional that your left foot should be fixed on the inner part of your right thigh. If that's too much of a bend in your knee, press your left foot into your right shin. And then inhale, lift your arms up towards the ceiling. Exhale, release your shoulder blades onto the ground. Inhale, start to lower your arms down and back of you until they touch the floor or they reach towards the floor. Palms face in towards each other. Extend your fingers towards the back of the room. And inhale, start to lengthen through your torso, your upper torso, which lifts your shoulders up and lengthens your arms towards the back of the room. Two more cycles of breath, inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale, start to lift your arms back up towards the ceiling. Draw your left knee into your chest. Draw your right knee into your chest. Rotate just a bit from right to left and left to right. Massaging your lower back, releasing your spine. And then switch the direction of your rotation from front to back and back to front building up a little bit of momentum until you push yourself up into a seated position. I'm gonna to turn to face you. Immediately press the soles of your feet together. We're gonna to be in Baddha Konasana, bound legged pose. So your legs are in the shape of a diamond. Hand comes onto your feet. Open up the soles of your foot like you're opening up a book. And inhale, lengthen up through your chest and heart. And then exhale, bend your elbows as you start to lower your chest down towards your feet. And some of us are going to stop right here, halfway. Others are going to come down even a little bit further, perhaps 
lower your forearms onto the ground. We're gonna be here for a couple of minutes. And in this bound legged pose, we're working towards having our torso as close to our feet and the ground as possible. And I want you to take your next very intentional moment for self observation. As you settle deeper and deeper into the pose, where's your mind? In his excavation of this attribute of patience, Alan Marina shares that impatience seldom makes things happen faster or better and usually only causes us grief. So if you can't right now get your torso all the way towards your feet or the floor. Practice acceptance. Return to the pace of nature. Soften your tongue. Release the muscles in your face and breathe. Let's take a few more cycles of breath together. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. One more inhale. And as you exhale, start to walk your hands back in towards your shins. Lift your torso up, come to sit in Sukhasana. Notice that stretch in your hips. That was a really enormous hip opener. Place your hands on top of your knees, palms facing up, and let your eyes close for a moment. The Hebrew word for patience is savlanut. And for those of you who are less familiar with the language of Hebrew, one of the many beauties in the language is that each word has a root. And the root for the Hebrew word of patience, savlanut, samach bet lamed is the same root that gives rise to the words for tolerance, suffering, and endurance. There is an acknowledgement that patience runs deeper than waiting, than just holding your breath. It acknowledges that there is a weight that is carried that it requires us to step up
And what we're here to explore today on our yoga mat is how we position ourselves through that endurance, through that waiting period, recognizing that there's some endurance required. Viktor Frankl said, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. We can't always change the weight that we carry. We can't always shorten the wait time when we're on hold or get the answers that we want or snap our fingers and have this virus go away. But we do have control over our demeanor, over our breathing and how we respond to the waiting. So press your palms together in the center of your chest. Set a kavana for your savlanut, your capacity to be patient as we go through this practice together. And now let's come into tabletop. We're going to start to flow through some poses. One of the things that we're going to be working up towards is balance. Balance is something that I find requires a lot of savlanut. Press your palms together into the ground, lengthen up through your arms into your shoulder sockets, and let's take a few cat-cow poses. Inhale, reach your heart and chest forward, arch your back, lift your tush up. Exhale, round your back, come into a cat position, draw your belly into your chest. A few more times, inhale into cow, and exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. One more time. Inhale into cow. Exhale into cat. Hold your cat position just a little bit longer. Spread your shoulder blades. And then exhale, release back into a tabletop position. Inhale, reach your right leg back. Keep your right leg parallel to the ground. Point your right toes down towards the mat. Press back through your right heel. Engage your belly. One more inhale. And exhale. We're going to start to add on. You're the master of your practice, though. So be mindful of that threshold between discomfort and pain. Inhale, reach your left arm forward. And exhale. Our first balance position of the day, the palm of your left hand is in towards the center. You might start to feel a little bit of a shake of a wobble. And that's the weight that we're carrying. So breathe. Relax your tongue. Inhale, grow longer through that right leg towards the back of the room. Exhale, start to lengthen your left torso towards the front of the room. One more inhale and exhale, lower your left hand, lower your right knee. Sp pause. Take another cycle of breath and second side. Inhale, left leg reaches back and pause. Press back through your left heel Lengthen your left leg, point your left toes down towards the ground. Start to rotate your inner left thigh up towards the ceiling. It's going to help you to keep your left leg straight. And then adding on, inhale, reach your right arm forward. Right palm faces in towards the center. Engage your core. 
When you engage your muscles, you bring some stability to your body. A few more cycles of breath. As Frankel would acknowledge, we're not changing this pose, but we have a choice for how we respond in it. And then with your next exhale, right hand comes down, left knee comes down parallel to your right knee. And then reach your right leg back, come onto your right toes, reach your left leg back, come onto your left toes, you're in a plank position. You can always modify with your knees on the ground, but then start to lift your hips up and back and come into your first Adho Mukha Svanasana, your first downward facing dog. Take a breath in through your nose, exhale out your mouth, inhale, and exhale. And again, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Step your right foot forward between your hands, lower onto your left knee, untuck your left toes. Inhale, lift your torso up. Lift your arms up towards the ceiling, bend deeper into your right knee. This is a high lunge. Again, inhale as you start to lengthen through all four sides of your torso, which lifts your arms up towards the ceiling. Turn your gaze up towards the ceiling, press your palms together. One more inhale. Exhale, lower your hands, frame your front foot. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your right leg back, you're in plank position, and immediately return to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Second side, inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, left knee draws into your chest. Step your left foot forward. Your palms frame your front foot. Lower your right knee onto the mat, untuck your right toes. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up as you bend into your left knee. And you can always choose to modify with a low lunge, keeping your hands on the floor. Make the practice accessible, but face the heat if you can. One more inhale as you lengthen through all four sides of your torso, and then exhale, lower your palms, frame your front foot, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your left leg back into plank position, hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Building on right leg up and back, right knee draws into your chest, step your right foot forward, this time, Keep your left knee off the ground. Inhale, lift your torso and arms up. Your right knee is bent. You're in a crescent pose. Inhale, lengthen through all four sides of your torso. You can modify by coming into the high lunge where your left knee is on the ground. If you're in crescent, inhale, start to bend into your right knee, bend your left knee, hover it above the ground. Exhale, straighten your left leg, lift up. We're gonna do that a couple of times. Inhale, bend into your left knee, lower down, hover the left knee right above the ground. Exhale, straighten your left leg, your torso lifts up. One more time, inhale and exhale. Lower your hands, frame your front foot. Step your right leg back to meet your left leg, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, draw your left knee into your chest, step your left foot forward, and space out your feet. You don't want them on a tight rope. 
Inhale, come into crescent pose. High lunge is the modification with your right knee down. Start with your right leg straight, pressing back through your right heel towards the back of the room. And then inhale, start to bend your right knee, lower it to hover above the ground. Exhale, straighten your right leg, lift your torso up. Inhale, right knee bends and hovers. Exhale, right leg straightens. Inhale, right knee bends and hovers. Exhale, right leg straightens. Lower your hands, bring your front foot, step your left leg back, plank position, return to downward facing dog. Inhale and exhale. And then lower onto your knees. If your knees are sensitive, pad them, double over your mat, hands on your hips. Step your right foot to be perpendicular with your left shin. And then start to lengthen your right leg out. Arms lift up. And then as you exhale, start to lower your right hand down towards your right leg. Lengthen up through the left side of your torso and start to rotate your left hand over to the right. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, lift your torso up, lift your arms up, hands come back onto your hips, bend your right knee, place your right knee back down onto the ground, and second side, gonna come to face you. Step your left foot out so that your heel, your left heel is aligned with your right knee. Lengthen your right leg towards the front of the room. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, lower your left arm over your left leg. Take your right hand, swing your right hand over to the left. Turn your gaze up to the right. This is a gate pose, three cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. Exhale, torso and arms come back up. Hands release onto your hips. Bend your left knee and lower your left knee back onto the ground. Return towards the top of the mat. Come into tabletop. Tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Start to walk your hands back towards your feet. Come into Uttanasana, a forward fold. Feet are hip width apart. And then take your second and third finger, make a hook around your big toes. Inhale, lift your chest halfway up. Exhale, start to fold forward. Draw your chest towards your thighs. Some of you, myself included, might have a bend in your knees. Bend your elbows out and lower down through the crown of your head. Few cycles of breath. And then start to straighten your legs, release the hooks from your big toes, hands on your hips, and inhale, slowly lift up one vertebra at a time till you're standing up in Tadasana, in mountain pose. Walk to the front of your mat. 
Stand with your feet together, arms alongside your torso, palms face out towards the front of the room, and breathe. Seize another moment for self-study. And in a moment, we're going to come into a few standing poses. And we're gonna hold these poses for longer than we typically do in the class that I teach so that we can really dig deep into our well of sabla nut, of patience. And again, recognizing that when we're no longer able to change a situation, we're challenged to change ourselves. And the parallel to yoga is that the poses are what they are. But how we respond in them. We're making a pivot from reaction to response is in our control. So I know you're not going to be able to see my head for just a little bit, but patience, sablanut. Step your feet together in the center of the mat the long way. If you have blocks or books, set them up so that one is towards each end of your mat and ready to go. Step your feet about four to five feet apart. Extend your arms out into a T position. Lower your hands to your hips. Lift up through your torso and heart. Draw your elbows towards each other in back of your torso. And then start to fold forward from your hips. Prasarita Padottanasana A. Wide-legged forward fold. Inhale and exhale. Release your hands from your hips. Place your fingertips onto the ground. And work your palms towards flat on the ground. And you might find that's hard to do, in which case widen your stance, create more space, and then start to walk your hands back so that your fingers are aligned with your big toes. And then lower the crown of your head down towards the floor. Gonna be here for about a minute. Practicing your breathing. and start to shift the weight of your body into the center of your feet. You might feel your legs begin to shake. Respond by focusing more on your breath. And then take your hands back onto your hips, draw your elbows in towards each other, slowly start to lift your torso up. And then shorten your stance a little bit. Angle your toes in, your heels out. Rotate your entire right leg out towards the front of the room. Angle your back foot in 45 degrees. Have the heel of your front foot aligned with the arch of your back foot. Extend your arms out into a T position and have your block right outside of your right foot. And then inhale, start to reach forward through your right hand towards the front of the room. Your hips go towards the back of the room. 
and then lower your bottom hand onto your block or your book or your ankle or your shin, and then reach your top arm up and open up into triangle pose. And a couple of actions while you're in triangle pose. Press your inner front thigh forward. Swing your top hip towards the top of the mat. It's going to help you come into the right alignment. Root down through your back foot and your front foot. That's your foundation. And then turn your gaze up towards the ceiling. Several cycles of breath. Make another observation. Where are you, mind, body, and spirit in the waiting? If your thoughts are veering towards your limitations, how can you redirect them towards awe of what you are able to do. Another inhale. Exhale, start to lift up through your torso. Arms are still out in that T position. Turn your gaze over your right arm. Start to bend your right knee and come down into Virabhadrasana two, warrior two pose. Really root down through your back foot. Remember that's an anchor. With each inhale, lift up through the crown of your head and with each exhale, bend a little bit deeper. Keep your torso right above your hips. There's an inclination to let your torso draw forward, recenter it, soften your belly, soften your tongue, And if you feel that you are approaching that threshold between discomfort and pain, straighten your right leg, step out for a moment. Sometimes that's the strategy of patience, knowing when to take a step back and come back into it again. It's not defeat, it's self-awareness. Straighten your right leg, hands on your hips, rotate your right foot in so that it's again parallel with your left. Shorten your stance and now turn your feet out, your heels in, press your palms together in the center of your chest, bend your knees out to either side of the room and squat down. One of my yoga teachers, Jessica Lang Wright says, being able to accept the moment as it is, no matter how difficult and trust that it will change sooner or later is another ability we grow in our yoga practice. So sitting in this goddess pose,
having faith that sooner or later it will change. Maybe not today, maybe not next week. It's all part of our practice. One more inhale, exhale, straighten your legs, hands back on your hips, pause for a moment, parallel your feet, and this time rotate your entire left leg out, your back foot angles in 45 degrees, second side, line your blocker book up right outside of your left foot. Extend your arms out into that T position. Inhale, lift up through your torso and exhale, excuse me, start to reach your front arm forward, hips back. Lower your left hand onto the block, your ankle or your shin. Rotate your top arm up towards the ceiling. Triangle pose. Rooting down into both feet. Start to swing your top hip towards the top of the mat. It's going to help you come into proper alignment. Turn your gaze up towards the ceiling. Few more cycles of breath. Take another inhale. Exhale, start to reach your torso back up. Turn your gaze out over your left arm. Bend into your left knee and come into Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2 pose. Root down through all four sides of your back foot so that it is an effective anchor. Position your torso so that it's above your hips, not leaning forward. Soften your belly. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head. Exhale, bend deeper into your left knee. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, lowering down. Knowing when to back off knowing when to step out, if that's what you need. And we all know sometimes that's not an option to step out, but I think it's an option that is more readily available than we all choose to acknowledge. One more inhale, exhale, straighten your front leg, hands onto your hips, rotate your left foot in so your feet are parallel, and then step your feet together and pause. Stand in Tadasana again, breathe. So there is a Christian faith leader, a woman named Joyce Mayer, who says that patience is not simply the ability to wait, it's how we behave while we are waiting. Such an important reminder, when we're in the thick of it with our friends, family, having a difficult conversation, repeating ourselves for the fifth time when we're not heard or understood. How do we behave in those moments? It's for us to choose, it's for me to choose. We are now gonna come into our peak pose into 
Vrikshasana, tree pose. It's a balance pose. Again, I, I know you can't see my delightful smiling face of encouragement, um, but you're gonna see the main parts of this pose. I'm gonna start with my feet a little bit apart. I think some of you are very familiar with this pose, in which case you can do it with me. I'm gonna start by shifting the weight of my body onto my left foot. I'm gonna draw my right knee into my chest and interlace my fingers around my right knee. Then I'm gonna swing my right knee out to the right side of the room, reach down, take on to my right ankle and press my right foot into my left thigh and my left thigh back into my right foot. I'm gonna press my palms together in the center of my chest to start. Focus my gaze on one point in front of me. And then when I feel like I have some stability, I'll lift my arms up. And what you'll notice is that this is exactly the pose that we practiced at the start of our session together, but we were lying flat on our back. So the only difference is that now we're standing on one foot. We're upright. And as a modification, you can press the sole of your foot into your left shin, you can have your toes on the ground and you can have the heel of your right foot directly above your left ankle. So there are modifications. One more inhale, exhale, lower your hands back onto your hips. Draw your right knee into your chest and then step your right foot down and shake it off. To quote Taylor Swift, shake it off. Second side, in just a moment, recenter yourself. And if tree pose is your like delicious pose and you're rocking it, awesome. You might have ways to modify and, and vary it even more. You can close your eyes, that adds a dimension of challenge. But if tree pose is one that's posing, <laughs> no pun intended, a lot of challenge to you, what is your behavior during the waiting? Are you going the path of frustration and defeat, letting your breath run away from you? Or are you stopping? one breath at a time, honoring where you're at, perseverance, letting the weight of your struggle sit on you. So second side, shift the weight of your body, this time into your right foot, draw your left knee into your chest, really root down into your right foot, Draw your left knee out to the left side of the room, grab onto your left ankle, press the sole of your left foot into your right thigh and press that right thigh back into your left foot. It's like a magnet. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. When you feel like you've hit that point of stability, lift your arms up towards the ceiling, palms face in towards each other. Fix your gaze on one point in front of you. It's gonna be here for several cycles of breath. Take another deep inhale. Exhale, start to lower your arms onto your hips. Draw your left knee into your chest and step your left foot down. Good job. Come to sit down, extend your legs out in front of you. We're gonna come into Marachyasana C. 
Bend your right knee. Lift your arms up towards the sky. Lower your right hand down and back of you. Press your palm into the ground. Fingertips face towards the back of the room. And then lower your left hand either onto your right knee or hook your left elbow outside of your right knee. Press the sole of your left foot forward and rotate your left ribs over to the right. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Going to be here for a few more cycles. Take another inhale and exhale, release, come back towards the center, arms come up towards the ceiling and arms come down, straighten out your right leg, second side, bend your left knee, lift your arms up towards the ceiling, this time lower your left hand down in back of you. Press your palm into the earth, rebound up through your torso, and then either lower your right hand to your left knee or hook your right elbow outside of your right knee. Inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head and exhale, this time rotate your right ribs over to the left. Several cycles of breath. And inhale and exhale. Inhale to release and lift your arms up. Exhale, lower your arms down and re extend your left leg towards the front of the room. Sitting up in Dandasana. We're going to do one more version of Marichyasana. You can decide if you actually want to repeat the one that was before or try this other version. Bend your right knee, plant your right foot on the ground and pause. Place both hands down onto the ground, one outside of your left leg, the other outside of your right foot. And inhale, lift your right arm up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, lower your torso and arm inside of your right knee. So you'll see that my right shoulder is inside of my right knee. And then bend your elbow and loop your right arm around your right leg. Take your left hand, rotate it back and grab onto your fingers. Straighten out, lengthen for your left leg. Inhale, lift your torso up a bit and then exhale, start to lower your torso down to your left thigh. Few cycles of breath. One more inhale 
and exhale, release the interlace of your fingers, lift your torso up and extend your right leg forward. Second side, bend your left knee, plant your left foot into the ground. Start with your hands, framing your right leg and left foot. And then inhale, lift your left arm up towards the ceiling. Lower your torso and left arm down inside of your left knee. Loop your left arm around your left knee. Rotate your right hand in back of you. Grab onto your left fingertips. And inhale, lift up slightly. And then exhale, lower your torso towards your right thigh. Few cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. Two more at your pace. and then release the interlace of your fingers, lift your torso up, extend your left leg forward. And our final pose is gonna be another restorative pose to honor my friend, Susan. And it's Viparita Karani, legs up the wall. So I should have said this at the start of the class. I apologize that I didn't. Hopefully each one of you has a section of wall around your computer that you can use that's clear. Find that section of wall. And just like we did at the start of the class with that tower of the blankets. And by the way, if you wanna come back into that one, you are more than welcome to do so. But if you're doing legs up the wall, you're gonna sit with your hips aligned with the wall. And you want your, your outer hip to really touch the wall. And then you're going to lower down onto your back as you reach your legs up the wall. Heels touch the wall. Scoot your tush in so that your tush touches that crack where the wall meets the floor. And you have a few options for what you can do with your arms. One option is one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest. Another option is your arms lift up towards the ceiling and fall behind you, which gives you length. And a third option is to grab onto opposite elbows and lower your forearms down towards the ground. There's no right way. Choose the version of Viparita Karani that works for you. And what's nice about this pose is that it is a version of an inversion. In a true inversion, your heart would be above your head. In this version, it's parallel with your head, but your legs are above your head. So you get some of the benefits of an inversion, reducing the flow of your blood in your legs, reversing the circulation. And in Viparita Karani, stay in the pose. Let your body relax. Let your mind relax. As a way to bookend our practice, exploring this attribute of patience once again when the stakes are low. Can you be present and calm in a restorative position? If 
going to take about a minute of silence. And for the last half minute, you can decide if you want to keep your legs up the wall or if you want to lower them down and come into a traditional Shavasana. Let's take a couple of final breaths together. Inhale through your nose. And an audible exhale out of your mouth. Inhale through your nose. And an audible exhale out your mouth. And Yogi's choice, you can totally stay in Viparita Karani with your legs up the wall or in Shavasana if you'd like. Otherwise, I'd like to invite you to sit up in Sukhasana with your shins crossed one in front of the other so we can close our practice. And I want to acknowledge the very tricky nature of the attribute of patience, especially in circumstances like the ones we find ourselves today. And especially as for those of us who are in the United States, and, and I hope elsewhere around the world, we are celebrating the legacy and the dream of Martin Luther King Jr. And the practices of Judaism and yoga are very explicit that while patience is an attribute we should invite into our life under most circumstances, in the face of injustice, we can drop that patience and push forward more strongly. So one, I wanted to clarify that. And secondly, I really wanna come back to this notion that patience is an opportunity that rests in each of our individual hands. Nobody else can force us to be patient. It's up to us to figure out how to endure the weight that we carry. And I think, I fear that too often we expect the change to come from others without recognizing our personal accountability. And that's a lesson that I think is especially acute during um, a weekend where we're celebrating the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. And it's certainly how I approach the issue of racial justice as somebody who is white. And I wanna share a final piece of wisdom from Rabbi Israel Salanter, who says the following, when I was young, I wanted to change the world, but I found it was difficult to change the world. So I tried to change my country. When I found I couldn't change my country, I began to focus on my town. However, I discovered I couldn't change the town. And so I focused on my family. And that was hard too. 
And so as I grew older, I realized that the only thing I can change is myself. And I've come to recognize that if long ago I had it started with myself, then I could have made an impact on my family. And my family and I could have made a ripple through our town. And that in turn could have changed the country. And we all could have indeed changed the world. So, so often we put our frustration, our impatience, our wants for the world onto others. Oh, that person needs to change. That person needs to soften. That person needs to do a better job of listening to what I'm saying. And my hope, my prayer, my blessing for all of us is that part of patience is self-endurance, bearing the weight, recognizing that there's work for me to do. There's ways that I can soften, that I can reapproach this situation. And if we can practice that in these poses on our mats, or even in the most vigorous of poses, the stakes are truly low, then I hope we have a better job of actualizing it off the mat. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. I want to invite you to make a blessing for yourself around this attribute of savlanut, of patience. Inhale and exhale. Lower your chin to your chest. Shabbat shalom, namaste. Thank you so much for being here.